Um, I don't think it goes above four, but if the world collapses, if the US economy collapses, we could go test that 1% level again. Hello everyone, today our guest is Jeffrey Sherman. Jeffrey Sherman is the Chief Investment Officer of Double Line Capital. In this video, Jeffrey Sherman talks about how fixed income markets are handling a slowing economy and the Federal Reserve's withdrawal of monetary accommodation. If you enjoyed this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. The dollar may have skyrocketed when COVID-19 hit the world in the first quarter of 2020, but interest rates fell just as steeply. The U.S. Central Bank brought the U.S. money market rate down to almost zero and pumped huge amounts of liquidity into the economy, and following that, the 10-year interest rate fell to approximately 0.50%. Now the dollar is rising at the same time as the Fed, Federal Reserve, raises interest rates very sharply and the 10-year interest rate is at its highest in years, is the US dollar always the winner regardless of what happens? Since the global financial crisis, G20 countries have called for avoiding so-called currency wars. The weapon of devaluation is not used on a large scale anymore, but right now, I claim the opposite is happening. Both the Fed and the US Department of the Treasury could very well foresee that the sharp US interest rate hikes would most likely strengthen the dollar. A strengthened currency is a helpful tool in combating inflation. At the same time, the interest rate hikes themselves are expected to dampen consumption. Uh, as you think about it, the, the Fed's going to continue to be somewhat aggressive. Um, they're going to continue to hike through this. So the market kind of knows that. It's looking through that. Um, but also, I think the, the credit component does have some risk today. But the thing about the credit risk is that spreads have widened out to a, a level across most sectors of the bond market that are commensurate with that risk out there. And so the bond market has been pricing in the higher inflation rate and by extension, potentially a slowdown. Um, there's a lot of talk of recession um, You know, in the last couple of months. I think some of that talk has cooled. I know your bears out there will continue to say it, uh, I don't believe we're currently in a recession. I mean, you can't print 500,000 jobs in a month and tell me that the labor market's challenged right now, plus wage growth and those likes. So I think the, the risks are relatively balanced. So what that means is, as someone who's trying to construct a portfolio, I think you want to own both of those risks, right? I think you want to use them and you understand that, yeah, if rates move up, let's say another 100 basis points, spreads will come under pressure. But at this level now, you're buying assets to where they have enough yield yield within them that you can stomach some of that price volatility. So said differently, and one thing that you know we, we've talked about a lot at Double Line is what you can compare the yield relative to the duration, right? And so it, it's kind of like a way of thinking about a sharp ratio. So if you think about a sharp ratio, it's the return divided by the risk. And again, duration doesn't encompass all the risk, but if I think about forward-looking return, yield is one place to start. You can penalize it for defaults and things like that. Um, you can put on your interest rate expectation, but yield is kind of what you get if you hold to maturity and doesn't default. And then you can divide it by the duration. And today in the market, you're finding that there's a better balance of that. And so what I like to say is when yields are high, you can make a lot of price mistakes and you don't see it as much. Do you care if a bond has a bid offer of 20 basis points when it yields 10? Or do you care a lot when it yields one, right? So there's a big difference in that. And so I think right now the risks are relatively balanced because I think we're in a slowdown. I, I'm, well, we all know we're in a slowdown. I just don't think the recession risk is imminent right now. And the consumer has been relatively resilient. I think that the next four months are still going to be challenging. The market's celebrating the inflation print today. Oh, Jay's going to be happy. Jay is Jay Powell going to be happy. You know, they're right. going to slow down their hiking path. I'm not convinced of that. And secondly, by the way, next month, they ratchet up the quantitative tightening. So their policy is to tighten. And I think there's one thing that I observed in the last two weeks, Jack, that I think is very important for your listeners, is that the market interpreted the FOMC meeting two weeks ago as extremely dovish. Right, because Jay said they're near, you know, they're they're probably around neutral. You know, it's been unusual hikes. We won't be as unusual. We could be, but you know, the market interpreted that as being 
and somewhat dovish. And you know, you, you could read it a little bit, but it wasn't that dovish. It was neutral at best. Uh, there were some hawkish things there because he's like, we'll still fight inflation. Rates rallied pretty significantly over the next three days, or including the, the FOMC day and the rest of that week. All of a sudden, you had the two-year down like 275, tens got to like 252, um, and guess what happened? Fed governors came out of the woodwork, right? They came out, Mary Daly, who's not usually out there, you know, she's a centrist and somewhat, you know, does very hawkish rhetoric. You had someone like uh, uh, Mester, uh, she came out and she's like, mm -hmm. uh, we may have to go above four. So all of a sudden, you know, what you saw there is that the bond market was flying in the face of the Fed's objective. Remember, the Fed is trying to tighten policy. By the market bidding rates so well and bringing rates down, all of a sudden now, you've got an easing of conditions. Spreads are coming in, rates are coming down, and the, the Fed said, wait a second, this is not what we want. When Jay Powell was, was promoted to be the Fed chairman, he was lauded for his attention to credit markets. He's a credit guy. That's what you hear. He looks at spreads. He talks to you know the corporate leaders. And so he should have saw those signs earlier, right? So the idea that he said the, the balance sheet's on automatic pilot, um, you know, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead, um, you know, with this policy, um, I think it actually took him meeting with Bernanke and Yellen, you know, the first week of January. I think that's where the pivot took place. I'm not convinced. It was actually the the, the bond market because those signs were there. Uh, the high yield market froze a few weeks ago, right? And again, we got that's kind of where the lows were again, right? There's no issuance. Uh, this happens when you get big moves in 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 rates or just borrowing costs, right? It can be rate driven or spread driven. So we saw that. Good news is, Jack, the high yield market's open on new issue again, right? And so you're going to go through these periods. Some of them are seasonal. Um, you know, there's other pockets like securitized credit where, you know, just deals get done at certain times of the year as well. So um, I, I do credit Jay Powell for navigating this environment. Um, he, he gets a lot of criticism. We've been Fed critics. I think he's done a good job this year. I mean, think about it. When Yellen first raised rates, back in 2016, right? And then we got to the end of that hiking cycle. They got to roughly where we are today, and it took them almost four years. It took them, th I'm sorry, three years uh, to get there. We did that in like four months, five months, right? From the hiking cycle, from, from May to now, it's like five months. So, I mean, give them, give the man some credit. I mean, he had the fortitude to push forward with this, and we've gotten to around neutral much quicker than we did in other, other cycles. So. I think he deserves credit. He's learned how to talk at the press conference. You know, one of these things, you got to learn on the fly of the job. I couldn't be the Fed chairman. I'm going to say something stupid up there, too. Right. So, you know, it, it's that thing. And people don't parse my words. Everything that man said is yeah. overly scrutinized. Right. So I think he's learned on the job. He's doing a good job. Look, they're in uncharted territory. He did a May culpa as well. I think that's what the market liked as well. He did that May culpa and say, Ultimately, you know, we were wrong on inflation. The humility is important here. What is your, let's say, 95% confidence level uh, for the 30-year Treasury bond, which has sold off tremendously, rallied over the past month? Um, you know, would a, a obviously a 6% 30-year Treasury would surprise you, but 5%, a 4.5%? Um, yeah. It's okay. Next 12 months, my 95% confidence interval is between one and four. <laughs> and I said 1% mm -hmm. and 4% because I think it could be that wild, right? And so then you say, well, that's not even a forecast. I agree with you. It's not. Um, I don't think it goes above four. But if the world collapses, if the U.S. economy collapses, we could go test that 1% level again. So now give me that range. You know, it's, I think the probability is very low we get to one. But you want a 95% confidence. That's what I got to get to. This silent currency war was clearly won by the U.S. a long time ago, and I estimate that it will continue for some time to come. This means that the Fed is not yet finished with interest rate increases, and I estimate that the 10-year interest rate in the U.S. will continue to go even higher. This suggests that the dollar will continue to remain very strong for a period to come, albeit with fluctuations that will occur. If you enjoy this highlight videos, Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.